I wish I could access a log that would show me how many hours I've spent since we started this show incredulously Googling a story, discarding one credible source after another because the story I'm reading about cannot possibly be true. Now, granted, it doesn't happen as much since the Trump era began, but because there's only so many times you can say this is too stupid to be true before you stop believing yourself, but it does still happen. Case in point, the high school kitty litter box panic of 2022. So here, here's how I first became aware of this. Lucinda still maintains her old Facebook profile under her real name. I gave that up in favor of my No Illusions profile years ago because y'all are so much better than my family and my old friends from high school. But she continues to live this double social media life so that she can keep up with her friends, kids and shit. And of course, she grew up in South Georgia and North Florida. So between those updates on the kids is pretty much just a wall of Fox News paranoia and Trumpian drivel. In other words, all the shit that ran me off of my old Facebook profile. Now, professionally, this is very useful for us. She stays way more plugged in than I do to what the batshit crazy Christians are up to. So I have a great barometer of just how fringe some of the shit I read about in the atheist media is, right? It's, it's also why it caught me all the way off guard when she said, have you heard this nonsense about the kitty litter boxes in high schools? And then I spent the next 90 minutes furiously Googling more information and then asking Google how sure it was that The Onion hadn't changed its name to Texas Monthly. But it hadn't. Turned out they hadn't changed their name to Right Wing Watch or Reuters either. This shit was true. So here's what those ridiculous idiots are afraid of now. According to multiple sources, including congressional candidates, we'll get to it. Schools in America are now adding kitty litter boxes to the public restrooms for students who identify as cats. Now, that is not real, right? Schools are not doing that. And even the most casual of Googles will confirm as much. All it takes is high school kitty litter to bring up multiple reputable sites and USA Today refuting this asinine claim. But of course, fact checking isn't a strong suit for the MAGA crowd. So Lucinda had multiple gullible ass conservative Facebook friends unquestioningly sharing bullshit propaganda sites seriously making this claim. Now, as, as near as I can tell, this all starts with a somewhat careless story from an NBC affiliate in Kentucky. The story is about a Louisville grandmother who started a petition to get students at the local school to stop dressing and acting like cats, a petition that the school superintendent assures parents is as necessary as a petition to get them to stop having like old timey pistol duels or something. But the article doesn't get to that part until the end. They devote the first eight fucking paragraphs to a completely credulous presentation of the grandma's story, which is that there are students calling themselves furries going to school wearing cat ears, tails, collars, etc. And I'm going to quote the anonymous grandma here who will, quote, hiss at you or scratch you if they don't like something you're doing, end quote. Of course, eventually the story admits that what really happened is that a few students went to school wearing cat stuff, got in trouble for violating the school's dress code and had to stop doing that. But because this fits so perfectly into their dumbass slippery slope argument that they love to make about trans acceptance, it caught fire. And now many of the MAGA influencers are running with it. And, and to make the story work, of course, they can't admit that the kids were told to leave their tails and cat ears at home. So it grew into schools accommodating the furries by installing litter boxes in the bathrooms for those students to shit in. Uh, the, the latest claim in the saga is that a school in North Austin is lowering some cafeteria seats so that their furry students can eat directly from a bowl without needing, you know, utensils. They just stick their face in there like a dog or a cat. And this claim comes from a tweet by a candidate for a congressional primary down there. Guess which party? Th 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 this forced a representative of the accused school to put out this amazing statement where she points out that the like the seats of their cafeteria can't even be lowered. <laughs> Now, when asked what the fuck she was talking about by local reporters, she said no comment and then apparently still hazy on what that term means, added a comment about how she was just relaying information she'd received from a concerned parent. Now, think about that shit. That's her defense. Her defense is that she just accepted a patently absurd claim that no reasonable adult should even be mentally capable of taking seriously and then passed it along on social media without checking its veracity. 
the key requirement of a congressional representative, of course, is to take in information from diverse sources, things that you're not an expert on, weigh competing viewpoints, and then make decisions through one synthesis of that information. Admitting that you bought into an onion-esque conspiracy theory and didn't even bother to Google it before passing it along is about as disqualifying for congressional office as any non-crime I can think of. But unfortunately, that doesn't matter when your voting block is entirely made up of people who also shared this stupid fucking story without a fact check. Or let me give their stupidity all the benefit that it's due despite doing a fact check. Of course, whenever I marvel over this kind of thing, I have to remind myself how much practice these people have being afraid of shit that doesn't exist. Right? I, I mean, we're talking about people who grew up fearing the rapture and burning in hell for eternity. In many cases, those are the fears they continue to hold. These are the same people that brought us Comet Ping Pong, QAnon, the Satanic Panic, subliminal messages in rock albums, bans on dancing, witch trials. And th this, is, this is inevitable. Right, It's baked in. In order to belong to their fucking club, you have to promise to fear a non-existent thing above all other things. And at the same time, you have to at least pretend not to be afraid of death, which is one of the few things you should actually be devoting some fear to. Getting fear ass backwards is one of the defining attributes of being a fucking Christian. And let's face it, in both of the aforementioned instances, you can't think about things too hard before coming to the conclusion that you're wrong. So the fact that they're disinclined to fact check their fears seems inevitable as well. Now, obviously, this mindset is fraught with problems. I'm sure you don't need an exhaustive list of why it's bad to fear non-existent shit. But in addition to the anxiety they manufacture for themselves out of whole cloth and the time they spend tilting at windmills instead of working on real problems, we also have to remind ourselves how easy it is to manipulate frightened people. Anybody who lived through 9-11 and, and saw how quick we were to jettison decorum, morality, and common fucking sense to assuage our fear of terrorism will know that well. But at least terrorism was a concrete thing. At a certain point, we could wake up as a society and realize that the fears that there are terrorists around every corner were unfounded. And to a certain degree, we eventually did. Right? We, we backed off of at least some of the worst reactionary shit we did in the wake of 9-11. But that can't happen when your fears are imaginary. Imaginary problems that are conjured into existence without evidence can't get better. I mean, I think about it. After thousands of years of war, God is no closer to conquering Satan because the people who are creating the fear are also the people who are using it. And it never stops being useful.